My name is Juho Heliste from Biomics. I'm a medical advisor, and this is the short introduction to SIP2D6 pharmacogenetics. First of all, what is pharmacogenetics? That is the study of genetic variants which affect drugs, their efficacy or safety. It's good, good to remember still that drugs are affected by many other factors also in addition to genetics. So genetics is only a minor part of the big picture. Uh, then about CYP2D6, that is an enzyme which is mostly expressed in the liver. It's also expressed in the intestines and kidneys and also in the central nervous system. But we can now focus on the, on the liver enzyme CYP2D6. Uh, it metabolizes many drugs and then also exogenous and endo endogenous compounds, which means compounds from the inside or the, uh, from the outside of the body. Uh, it represents only a minor proportion of all SIP enzymes in the, in the liver. SIP enzymes are a family of enzymes and SIP2D6 is only a, a one member of it. And there is only one to five percent of uh, SIP, SIP2D6 of all SIP enzymes in the liver. But still, it metabolizes uh, approximately 25% of all clinically used drugs. So it has a huge impact. Uh, genetic variants of CYP2D6 affect the pharmacokinetics of drugs. That means that they influence the speed at which body metabolizes these drugs. Uh, drug metabolism generally it aims at making drug molecules more water soluble and therefore easier to excrete and they are also then more inactive and, and less less toxic uh, but then certain drugs they are called the so-called pro drugs which only become active when they are uh, activated by some enzyme and here we have a graph presentation of uh, pharmacokinetic differences in different individuals and here on the horizontal axis we get time and on the Vertical axis, we got drug concentration, which means the amount of uh, drug in the blood. And in normal metabolizers, when given normal drug dosage, uh, the drug concentration goes to the therapeutic window, which is the optimal uh, range for the drug concentration. But in slow metabolizers, the metabolism is slow and the drug accu accumulates in the blood. And this causes too high drug concentration and more adverse effects. On the other hand, ultra-rapid metabolizers, they metabolize the drug very fast, which causes too, uh, too low concentrations of the drug, and therefore the drugs become in inefficacious. And the same thing on the population level. Uh, there is a population with genetic differences in the speed of metabolism, and when all the patients are given a uh, normal amount of, of standard amount of drug, then poor and intermediate metabolizers, they tend to get too high concentrations of drug and ultra-rapid metabolizers get too low concentrations of the drug and only normal metabolizers get the optimal ideal drug concentration. This leads to more adverse effects in the uh, slower metabolizer groups and then on the other hand, too low drug concentration and, and inefficacy in the ultra-rapid ultra metabolizers. But then, if the dosing is uh, done according to the genotype, then uh, most of the patients should fall into the optimal drug concentration level. And this leads to less adverse effects, especially here in the, uh, in the slow metabolizer groups. And there should be no too low drug concentrations. So out of these drugs, which are metabolized by CYP2D6, approximately half are, are um, affected by the pharmacogenetic variants in the CYP2D6 gene. So that is a huge amount. There are approximately uh, over 160 drugs which are metabolized by CYP2D6. Uh, for example, codeine and other opioids, which are used for pain management, then amitriptyline and other tricyclic an antidepressants, uh, then paroxetine and other SSRI drugs, which are used for anxiety and de depression mood disorders then antipsychotic medications, anti-emetic medications, which are therapeutics against nausea and vomiting, then beta blockers, antiarrhythmic medications for the arrhythmias of the heart, and then also breast cancer drug tamoxifen. Then about pharmacogenetic variants of CYP2D6, 
uh, normally there are two functional copies of the CYP2D6 gene in the DNA of every cell of the human body. And this setup produces a so-called normal or average amount of CYP2D6 enzyme. And therefore its metabolic activity on drugs is, is of common or average speed. But then there are known genetic variants, uh, SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms in the gene, which can cause the enzyme to work slowly or then not at all. So this causes lower CYP2D metabolism and these individuals with such variants, they become intermediate or poor metabolizers. Then the CYP2D6 gene can also be deleted totally, one copy or then even the both copies. So this also leads to slower metabolism. And finally, CYP2D6 gene can be multiplied. So there can be several functional or then alternatively non-functional copies of the gene. And if the uh, additional copies are functional, there, there's more functional CYP2D6 enzyme produced and therefore the metabolism becomes very fast or ultra, ultra rapid. And then a glimpse to the distribution of these metabolizer groups. Uh, poor metabolizers and intermediate metabolizers are somewhere between 1 to approximately 10% in, in different populations. And normal metabolizers, the average population, uh, they are somewhere between 70 to 90% of, of different populations. And ultra rapid metabolizers are 1 to a couple of percents. And uh, especially here in the Finns, there are up to 7% of ultra rapid metabolizers. And here we have a distribution from a Finnish cohort of people and we see how the, the metabolizer groups are distributed. Then a couple of examples of drugs which are affected by CYP2D6 pharmacogenetics. First codeine, which is a weak opioid for pain management. So uh, codeine is metabolized by CYP2D6 to morphine and that is the compound which is mostly responsible for the um, pain relieving effect of codeine. In poor metabolizers, codeine is transformed ineffectively to morphine and there is then lack of pain relief. And in ultra-rapid metabolizer, codeine is transformed to uh, morphine very effectively. And this leads to kind of like morphine overdose and it could cause uh, possibly dangerous side effects. For example, nausea, dizziness, sedation, respiratory depression and so on. Here we have a presentation of codeine metabolism by CYP2D6. As codeine enters the liver, CYP2D6 changes one of the functional groups in the molecule to, to another and therefore it, it becomes morphine and this is the active compound which causes the pain relief. So codeine is contraindicated in ultra-rapid CYP2D6 metabolizers. This means that in the ultra-rapid metabolizers the drug shouldn't be given at all. And for poor metabolizers there is risk of treatment failure and some alternative drugs should be used. Another example, paroxetine, which is an SSRI drug that is used for uh, mood disorders like anxiety or depression. So paroxetine is metabolized by CYP2D6 to inactive metabolites. So this is now other way around as compared to codeine. So poor metabolizers, they have increased concentrations of paroxetine in their blood and they're more susceptible to adverse effects. And ultra-rapid metabolizers, they tend to metabolize the drug too fast and their drug concentrations fall too low and there's more often treatment failures. So therefore it is beneficial to change the drug to an alternative which is not metabolized by CYP2D6. So in summary, CYP2D6 participates in metabolism of huge amount of drugs and approximately half of them are affected by pharmacogenetics in the gene. So these drugs, they can be potentially dangerous or then ineffective when used at normal dosages in slower or faster CYP2D6 metabolizers. So to tackle this problem, uh, with the help of pharmacogenetic testing, these problematic medications or their dosages can be changed to more suitable. And this can lead to especially tailored medications for indivi each individual. And this end ends my uh, introduction to CYP2D6 pharmacogenetics. Thank you. Yeah.